On today's Mark Meets, I'm joined by Sally Jackson from the Pink Pig. Mark Baker. It's Matthew Goodwin. Amber. Amber's a client manager at the Scunthorpe office, having originally started as an apprentice. I'm, uh, I'm Mark. Yeah, so I grew up in uh, Scunthorpe. Um, I went to Foxhalls Secondary School. Um, yeah, that's basically where I grew up. Does that take us up to the point when you decided to become an electrician? Yeah, so like most uh, 16-year-old lads, I sort of left school immediately, not really knowing what to do. Um, I kind of wanted to go down the music route, but fast, you know, found out that there wasn't much of a music scene around this area. So um, <clears throat> took the conversations with my, my dad, he sort of persuaded me to go down the the trade route, find a trade. Um, so I was straight in at 16 years old, uh, went to college and started. Was that through an apprenticeship with it an was, employer, local employer? Yeah. So I started with um, a, quite a large company in Scunthorpe uh, doing a day release. So I worked for them for free uh, on a Monday just to try and get in with them and then went to college. I'm uh, Matthew Goodwin. I'm the director and one of the uh, co-owners at Goodwin Healthcare Services based in uh, Scunthorpe, North Lincolnshire. Um, the company provides care to um, people in their own homes and we also do uh, supported living as well. Um, the company has now been operating 10 years this year. Um, so obviously that's a, an achievement in itself, uh, something that we will be celebrating. Um, we employ approximately 90 staff and provide care to approximately 70 service users. We um, are on the contract with the local authority and the CCG, also you know known as the NHS, and we do a proportion of private work as well. Okay, great. Yeah. And let's rewind right back to the start, then, Matthew. Tell us, tell us about you from uh, from being a child, if you wouldn't mind. Okay, um, so born and bred in Scunthorpe, I have an older sister, Claire. Um, I went to Linton Prep, it's a well private school in Scunthorpe. Um, I think well, my parents sent me sent me there because uh, I was behind at uh, primary school and it, I, you know they felt that I needed to play catch up. Anyway, um, so yeah, went there with Claire and um, well, from a young age, you know, very driven. Um, I think that was more to do with my parents uh, encouraging us to work hard. Um, so and there was also an element of that at, uh, at the school there was a competitive there. I've also all always been uh, had an interest in sport. So from a young age, playing football, playing rugby, um, I did a little bit of karate as well. And um, so, yeah, finished my studies at uh, private school. Then I went on and passed my 11 plus, went to Queen Elizabeth High School in Gainsborough, which is a, a grammar school. Um, there again, um, worked very hard. Um, also run alongside it. I also always had a keen interest in sports. Uh, predominantly rugby through my teens, but uh, also randomly I um, used to throw discus uh, at county level for Scunthorpe and district athletics. What was your PB on that, Matthew? Oh, God, I can't remember now. <laughs> I'm going to say about 35 metres, but I, if I'm honest, I can't remember. Sounds impressive. Yeah. Uh, I do recall uh, quite randomly that the coach, he, was, uh, he had a running background, so when we used to turn up for training twice a week he used to take me for, for long runs and I used to think well, what's this got to do with discus but uh, anyway um, it taught me the love for running actually yeah. as well. Sally tell the listeners about yourself. Oh goodness well I'm 60 this year so it's quite a long time to talk about. Looking fabulous as well. <laughs> of course of course <laughs> but anyway yes yeah, so I'm um, brought up down south as you can tell from my accent everyone calls mm. me posh um but, uh, yeah, so went to university and did uh, charter surveying, which is jack of all trades, master of none, mm -hmm. which put me in good stead to be an entrepreneur, I reckon. Yep. Um, so did surveying for a while, then met my husband, who's a farmer in Scunthorpe. So moved up here when we got married um, and continued surveying up here for a few years until I decided that I really didn't want to do surveying anymore okay. and wanted to start a business. So I started my first business, which was children's wear, mm -hmm. um, back in the dark ages before the internet. So I used to have to go into the library, find fabric manufacturers, write to them or ring mm -hmm. them, get samples. It was horrendous. Thank God for the internet. Yep. And um, and then went back to the for a little while and then decided to set up a farm shop. 
which we know was the Pink Pig. So mm. what, what was the driver for that? Why did you decide to go down that route? Can you My mum and dad are mm-hmm. both entrepreneurs. Yep. And I think it's just in the blood. Um, my children accuse me of having ADHD. And mm-hmm. It's never been diagnosed, and I'm sure it's rubbish. But it's a, called a butterfly brain. So yeah. you're constantly thinking of new ideas and new things to do, which is good for business ideas, not necessarily good for for carrying it through Mm -hmm. and my husband is probably fairly similar so not a good combination (laughs) so everything's been an idea yeah 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 that's gonna be great let's go and do this without really thinking it through okay so the initial challenges of setting up the pink pig what what were they how do you luckily well it happened very slowly i guess Mm -hmm. because we had a trestle table at the end of the drive and then we had a little shed and then we had a little um farm shop and a restaurant just 24 seats so everything has happened fairly slowly which has been good mm-hmm. although it's a bit frustrating but it is good because you're earning money to put back into the business and gradually growing it yep. the disadvantage is that you never get to pay yourself mm-hmm. having said that I was running it with three small children so actually and I tell other entrepreneurs this ones that are starting out I say your business has got to fit you yeah so if you've got a small family small children you can't devote your whole attention to a business my children call it my fourth child anyway yeah you just cannot so you just have to you have to pace it so as soon as the kids left home yeah. <laughs> suddenly everything's sort of fallen into place and got yeah. good so the popular child got all the attention it needed <laughs> the, at that popular, point, yeah. the popular yeah. child stayed at home yeah, and just, yeah. <laughs> And keeps on growing. Keeps and keeps on, on growing. growing. And keeps on growing. Amber, tell the listeners about yourself. So I'm originally from Accrington in Lancashire. Uh, I went to Peel Park Primary School and that's where all me and my siblings have gone. Uh, then I went on to Holland's Technology College where I did my GCSEs. Mm-hmm. How did they go? They went really well. I got A's and B's mm-hmm. which was great. And then from there I went on to college where in my first year I studied maths, psychology, law and music and then in my second year I dropped music to be able to focus on the other subjects. Um, I really enjoyed law, that was my best subject, I got an A in that um, which prompted me to consider it doing it at degree level in university. Okay, so which university did you go to? So I went to Manchester Metropolitan University and I studied law there for three years. But I had a gap year in between, which is when I moved to Scunthorpe to live with my partner. Okay, great. Was there a particular element of the the law degree that you liked the most and disliked the most? Um, It's been a few years Mm -hmm. since now. Um, I think the one I enjoyed the most was probably... I quite enjoyed Wills and Probate. That was quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Different from what I had done already. Yeah. Um, least exciting, mm, probably international law. Right, okay. It sounds very dry and that's yeah. coming from an accountant, yeah. so it says a lot. <laughs> so you got to the end of the degree and you got a first, I believe. I did get a first. Which is, which is brilliant. And, and you then took, I suppose, what could be deemed the unusual step not to pursue the career in law, a career in law directly mm-hmm. was was there a reason behind that at that point in time um i think i knew whilst i was studying that i didn't really i wasn't set in doing law as a career it was just something i enjoyed doing so i thought i'd get a degree in it mm-hmm. um and then once i'd finished i knew that the process for becoming qualified was really lengthy yeah and i'd already spent how long in education i didn't want to spend another 10 years becoming qualified yeah so then i was just sort of i just finished so i was just looking for jobs and then i saw the jackson stable someone yeah. and i knew i wanted a professional career yeah. something i can really get into show off my skills and my knowledge and do really well at and i so I'd give it a try. Excellent. Which which brings on us onto the reason that that you're on today is as well please is to talk to you. Um, we're now working more closely with the colleges and 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 dealing with students at different ages, so GCSE, AS level or half A level if that that still exists, A level, and then even people that have started a degree or, or completed a degree. And, and sort of the common common question is when is the right point to do it? And I think your living testimony to it's kind of never too late not that you're mm-hmm. that old but 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 normally 
Um, someone may have started the, the apprenticeship in accountancy younger than you, it's maybe fair to say. Um, but, but also, interestingly, of course, you've got the aptitude and the intelligence and, and, and what you've taken from your degree. You come in with a, you know, degree more of life experience than maybe some of your peers that you've worked around and see and, mm-hmm. and come into. So, so really it's to highlight that the career is, it's never beyond, it's never beyond you. You know, yeah. yeah. I, th- I think sometimes people think I'm 18, I've, I've made a decision, I've, I've I've taken a degree and I must follow that path. Actually, accountancy is equally as open to, to, to an, an any age. So what would you say was the biggest challenge of, of running the business? I think it's um, not having the confidence to sort of know what you're doing. So having gone from surveying to then suddenly running a shop and a restaurant um, was a completely different set of skills, mm-hmm. especially dealing with people and people are the hardest to deal with because everybody is different. You can't treat them all the same like you can treat cheese. Mm -hmm. It's it's just dealing with people is is tricky. Um, But also, it's one of the most fulfilling things. Yeah. Um, But never go into business if you don't like, into a business with people if you don't like people. And I've Mm. seen lots of people do it thinking, what are you doing? You don't even like people very much and you're trying to run a hospitality business. So you've got to Mm. like, you know, you've got to enjoy what you do. Would you say it's changed you as a person, or was it? Do you think you're the same Sally Jackson that started? Or, no, I think no? I'm the same Sally Jackson right, that started, okay. just a little bit older and a little bit wiser. Okay. What does what does mental health mean to you? How do you how do you view that? Either how it's portrayed, um, how it's covered, how people understand it, or even just just simply how how you maybe deal with with the challenges of 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 having a family, running a business, um, aspiring to do things, but also looking to have a balance in life as well. How, how, how do you sort of box that off if you can? I think it's important. Yeah, very important. Um, I mean, personally speaking, at the age of 25, um, it's when I had my, my first child. So at 25 years old, I was a, I was a father, a landlord and the boss yeah. with employees. So, um, Quite an time, achievement, yeah. Sorry? Quite an achievement, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at the time, it was just a bit of a whirlwind. Um, it, everything was just happening so fast, so it, it didn't feel like an issue. But looking back, um, could you know, it could quite easily get caught up with the mm-hmm. mental health side. Um, but again, I think exercise definitely helps that. Yeah. Um, taking time out, music, listening to music, things yeah. like that definitely help. You've got to have the downtime, switch off when you get home and not take it. Yeah, stress is home with you. Yeah. It's definitely important to um, try and segregate. Yeah, just sort of time block. Yeah. yeah. not Because it's easier now, and you'll have seen that transition, I suppose, as well with, with technology from when you first started. Yeah. Even definitely. even as so a young media, person. Yeah. 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 yeah, it wasn't the same 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in terms of um, for any listeners that say aren't in business, so to speak, and I don't like that phrase, but it's it's the easiest way that you can uh, box it off. What what would you say to them if if they were considering it and and either felt socially there was some kind of impact for them, or or, or physically, or or people around them are, are saying oh, there's too much risk. What what would you say to them in in terms of um, how to approach it? Yeah, I had a good question. Um, I, I believe it, if, if you're going into business, it's something you've really got to be passionate about. Um, and ideally, have some knowledge around as well. Yeah. Um, I would encourage you to look at your own lifestyle, actually, as well. I mean, if you're having young children, can you commit the time to mm-hmm. running a company, particularly starting a company, because it will impact your social life, your yeah. friendships, your, your relationships. So just to consider all those factors first. Yeah. But... Um, don't get me wrong, if it, if it pays off being your own boss, it's nothing like it. Well, I mean, I love it, but yeah. there are a lot of sacrifices. 